a very red moon up there. Red moon rising in the east. Following the sun over the plane of our existence. One we could no more take apart and hope to arrive at our destiny or destination than we could take apart a commercial air flight and expect to get to our destination, just to put things into perspective. An uncommon perspective, though it may be. That's not a star over there, that's somebody's light. I'm testing this because I wasn't sure how much the moon would show up on this camera. But I'm, I'm seeing a, a small faint indication on my screen, so we'll see how that turns out. the sound of the crickets. A lot of things go on in this world every day. It's very common to hear the notion that a few people make a lot of decisions on behalf of other people. But it's not that difficult to make our own decisions. There are plenty of decisions that we can make on our own behalf that are not constrained to the range of equally tostic materials in the proverbial supermarket of modern life. Not that there's any shame in providing for your family the best available food that you can get. Nonetheless, there is a great range and a greater range of choice in the matter than we normally take advantage of how we raise our children, how we conceive of our children, how we live our lives, how much we work, how much time we spend with our kids, our parents, where we go to school, if we go to school. This notion of where should I go to school, as though it is a place separate from the nature that we live in, the nature that resonates with the womb, wherein God chose to bestow upon us the particles of feeling that remain with us for the rest of our lives. There is no avoiding the law of our own particles of joy and of the mind of the bliss intelligence of creation, of heaven and earth. We can try to. We can be encouraged to. We can almost be forced to resort to. But at the end of the day, it's simply better to go with the current of the universe than it is to go with the current of society or a society that is so averse to the current of the universe as though it is inimical rather than essential to every happiness that we claim to aspire to, or science for that matter. Again, another perspective. I've made a lot of choices. Taken my own circuitous route through the different spheres of understanding of predatory ideas and the not insurmountable challenge of extracting the truth from the fiction, the nutrients from the poison, in fact I enjoy it. taken its toll, though it has, over the years. But time will do that. The world will kick you in the kick you in the gut and spit down your throat. And um, that's no kind of way to start in this world. But we can provide better for our children. 
with sufficient thought, and it shouldn't be difficult. To be easy as breathing, as eating, as talking to a friend, talking to God, talking to the most approachable and most friendly intelligence there is, that of God's thought and nature, which is no spiteful thing, and nor is man when we have enough nature. I know you can't really see the moon now, but if I turn this camera around, you're certainly not going to see me. So we're talking in the dark. We've done that before. You can sort of... Uh, I'll point it at the only light there is. How's that? <clears throat> A lone lamp in the darkness. Here we are, billions of individuals traveling through the semi-darkness of the so-called developed world, the perpetual semi-darkness. Here we are traveling through life, day to day, our cells, our bodies, our food, our way of life, our languages, our customs, our wants, desires, feelings, trauma, individuality all the different devices and ways, instruments, good or bad, that we use to exhume our happiness from the bowels of history, from the disruption of the true history of our cellular family complexes, generation after generation, of people who have been unable to or have forfeit their ability and responsibility to restore the order of our families to a way of life sufficient to assuage anywhere near the amount of suffering that is foisted upon every successive generation of our children in a society so scientifically as religiously kept poised on a perpetually bloody brink of near collapse, veritably at war with every natural instinct with which a child is born and to which we force our most vulnerable citizenry to conform under only the most Herculean duress, duress that would stymie the courage of the most battle-hardened combat soldier, let alone that for we, child of God." God, the most friendly thought in nature. Every day, like a big shaggy dog wagging his tail every moment we open the window or step outside of the door, let me introduce you. Let us introduce one another. Right now, wherever you are, outside your window, the most friendly thought, conceived of all the joy we would each have in the most wonderful correspondence of mother and father, and son and daughter, of man and nature, of heaven and earth, of the everlasting and the ever-passing, of the creative intelligence of man and nature alike. Sound good? The most friendly thought. I want to leave you with that most friendly thought, and I'm going to call this video The Most Friendly Thought. And I'll leave you with that thought. And I leave you in good hands by leaving you to that thought, because that thought is eternal, and it's alive. And everyone is alive with that thought. And you wonder if peace could be in the world. <laughs>